Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. We are at Popple headquarters, and I have a very special guest, my co-host today, Josh Palais. What's going on? What's up? I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here too. So we have uh, Nick and Jason from Popple. Uh, we met Nick and Jason. Actually, I met Nick and Jason at David Meltzer, my media mentor. David Meltzer does coaching pre-pandemic. He used to have in-live person coaching. And I went down there for the coaching and I met these two founders. They showed me what Popple was. And once we explain what Popple is, you'll know exactly why they are on digital hospitality. I made a promise that we would get this episode done. But every single week we teach people how to be better storytellers on their smartphone. Um, the smartphone has done so much for our business, our brick and mortar business, our barbecue business, and we have become a media company because of it, because of all the social media apps, because of your ability to produce content for these apps. And our job every week is to bring you inside with the people that are playing the game within the game. Um, we're here with the, uh, the think tank. So we're here in the rotunda at Popple headquarters. Uh, thank you guys for having us. Yeah, thank you for showing up. So I'm gonna do uh, something that I do David Meltzer taught me, I was lucky to be on Amazon Prime TV on his two minute drill. So I know you guys are well versed in pitching your company, pitching your ideas. So David Meltzer taught me through his two minute drill that you need to know how to pitch your company. I'm gonna give you two minutes to tell us who you are and who Popple is. You think you guys can do that for me? Nick, want to Absolutely. Away? Yeah, he's a pro. Yeah, so Popple is the next generation business card. Professionals put Popple on their phone, keychain, or wrist to make instant digital connections with clients. So how it works is I have a Popple on my phone right here. I can go to an event and I can meet someone who's never heard of Popple. And all I have to do, you want to pull it up on your phone? All I have to do is tap my Popple to the back of their phone, just like that. They'll get a push notification. And when tapped, it'll open right to my digital business card. And this is my full profile. I choose which links I get to share. So if it's like my Instagram, my website, it all lives on my Popple profile. And what's great is if I'm going to a conference, a business event, I can switch over to my business profile and then immediately share my business links. And then let's say I'm going to the bar after the event. I don't want to share with my link. I don't want to share my LinkedIn. I can switch over to my personal profile and share my Instagram and my Twitter. Or your Snapchat. Or my, I don't use Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or your TikTok. You get the idea. I, I get it. I get it. Um, I love the idea for the company. I mean, I told Josh what you guys were doing. Um, he obviously knows what we do at Digital Hospitality. Josh, when you looked into what, we, what they were doing, what, what was your thoughts? Simple. Uh, but my first initial thought was that it's simple. It's an easy way to get somebody's contact information. And during COVID, you don't want to shake hands with somebody. So just tapping your phone against somebody else's makes it very easy to get their contact information. So one of the cool things for me is demystifying technology. You know, we use technology every single day. We have these smartphones in our pockets, yet we take them for granted. And the cool thing for me is what you guys have created is you've created an easy way to bring the online world, the social world into business. You know, when I see a video that you guys have made that has 80 million views on TikTok, for me, I understand the power of that because I know that's generated into sales. For you guys, tell me about how the birth of this company happened. Like where, where did the origin story start? Yeah, so Nick and I were in a part or at a party in the Hollywood Hills and uh, we came across NFC technology. And- So explain that, explain that for the listener that doesn't know what that is. Sure, so NFC technology is a, uh, is a protocol that is now native in these modern smartphones that we have. Um, pretty, pretty new, it's the iPhone XR and newer. Okay. Um, so with NFC, what you can do is you can send a piece of data to a phone without that phone needing an app or a product themselves. So that's the beauty of Popple. You know, I can meet you, I can meet 10 new people who have never heard of the product and I can still share my data. It doesn't matter, iPhone, Android, doesn't exactly. matter. It's, it's, a it's technology also nice. that goes into Apple Pay. Right, okay. oh, but it's also nice perfect. that NFC does work cross compatible, so it is Android and iOS. Got it. Which is powerful. Um, so we came across this technology and the first thing we thought of as social guys was, hey, you could use this to exchange contact information. So we thought, okay, you know, what's a behavior that already exists that's common behavior? Tapping phones to share data, that just makes sense, right? Um, so we kind of went into that and said, okay, what if we built a product that goes on the back of your phone that it essentially allows you to just delete, 
like almost like bump back in the day, um, allows you to just tap bones, which is behavior, behavior that makes sense, and then the data is transferred. So we you know, invented this back of the phone product, came out with it, and uh, yeah. So taking me back to the party, because like the essence of what we do in digital hospitality is we talk about hospitality is making a memorable moment. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's the technology that creates the oh shit moment. Like literally when I first learned what Apple Pay was, I was hesitant. I was hesitant to download a fucking credit card onto my phone because I didn't want to be the asshole in line that held up the line fumbling with my phone. Right. But then once I got, got over my ego and went in the line, put my phone in, now I can't take a credit card out because it takes too long. Mm -hmm. Like I'm pissed as fuck if I can't pay with Apple Pay. <laughs> right. So when you were in, where were you, Beverly Hills? It was Hollywood Hills. Hollywood Hills. Mm -hmm. And you're at this party, what happened? Yeah, so um, I actually met someone who had a business card, a, a, a physical card, right? And they tapped my phone with this card and that, that sent the data to my phone and I had never heard of this before and that was the fascinating moment to me, that I was able to have my phone, no app or anything downloaded, tapped to my phone and it sent a piece of data. And what so- What did it send you? Do you remember? Uh, it sent me, it was, it, it was a website. It was a website. So it, it was similar. You know, it sent me a website and it had some contact information. Um, but the first thought that I had was, okay, first off, that's really cool. I didn't know that my phone could do that. Um, and I, my background's in software. So I was very surprised by that. Uh, but my second thought is, why are you using a card? Why not come up with a, a, you know, accessory that's always on your phone that allows you to do this phone to phone tapping. And so from that idea, we then started the back of the phone tag. What did you do? You go, how did, how did this happen? How did the partnership happen? So um, after that, well, he was at the event too. Um, I think you also noticed this, right? Yeah, yeah. He like, so he pulled out his wallet and then pulled out a business card. And, and that's why we were like, let's make it way easier and put it on the back of the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how we upgraded that part. So I was just obsessed with NFC from then on. Uh, I spent like months researching it and I eventually ordered a bunch of prototypes to our apartment. We were roommates at the time. Um, and so we had all these prototypes and we found one that worked for our use case um, and worked you know, really nicely on the back of the phone. There's some specifications there. Um, and then we said, you know, let's write this to our Instagram. So we wrote it to our Instagram, very simple, no platform yet. And it worked. So yeah, I, I remember like I was just like working out on our balcony at the old apartment. And then he, he comes out, he's got the tag on his phone. He's like, check this out and taps it to my phone. I click it and it goes right to his Instagram. And I'm like, holy shit. You did it like that. This is what we're like. This is it. Let's make this a company. And so that was like that was kind of like the point where we're like, oh, my God, we got something here. This is like a really cool idea. It's never been done. So we kind of ran with it. It's incredible. I mean, when I interviewed Casey Adams, who hosts the Rise of the Young podcast, I also met him through David Meltzer, but he's young. He's 21 years old. How old are you? Uh, I just turned 25. Holy shit. You're young, too. Yeah, 24. 24. Yeah. And you're young, too. 27. 27. So I'm the old man in the room at 39. And the reason I bring it up is because I didn't, I went through college and when, once I graduated college in 2004, that's when Facebook came out. Mm -hmm. So like, it's important as the conversation for all of us to understand how fast technology has changed and how native it is to our lives. But when I interviewed Casey Adams, what I asked him was about Instagram profiles. And basically what he said was, I don't care what age you are. If you don't have an up-to-date Instagram profile, you're dead to me. In business. In so business? Oh, in business. Like, so in business, if you're trying to conduct business as the CEO of a company or your brand and you don't have an Instagram profile, like you're dead. But back to this is that you've connected what we talk about on this podcast every week is, all, is claiming your social profiles, being active, putting out content, but then how do you tie that together? You know, the, really the, the part where you're using new technology to tap each other's phone through an accessory, a branded accessory nonetheless. When did the brand idea come? Like knowing that this is something that other companies would wanna have their brand on. Us as a podcaster would wanna have a digital hospitality logo on, the, on, on their phone. Right. We kinda, we kinda realized like after we had been selling on Shopify, um, we kinda realized like the back of your phone is pretty valuable real estate since you always have your phone on you. When, when does someone not have their phone on them? Never. So this space right here is valuable and people love putting their own, like customizing things. Yeah. So we kind of just had the idea like, let's like put some company's logos on there. And like David Meltzer, we, get, we made him some custom popples with David Meltzer topic. Enterprises yeah. on them. Yeah, so that, that kind of like just naturally we made that progression into 
branding and like let's let's and now that's a big a big uh, portion of our company is custom products. It just made sense. Yeah. When you guys first started your company and you realized you finally had something, how did you guys get the word out there? Was it through Instagram? Was it through the other students at UCLA? How, what was the process like? So, to, to, to be honest, at the beginning, we, um, we threw up a couple ads. We didn't know what we were doing. So we threw up some Instagram ads, and Facebook ads, and they did not do well. Um, <laughs> but what kept us going... Static ads, video ads? But a little bit of both. A little bit of both, yeah. okay. But what kept us going is that when we would show people in person, they would be like, holy, holy fuck. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then there is that spark, and they thought well, that's going to be huge. Zio shit moment. Exactly, it's and that so magical moment where that kind of kept us going. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so then from there, we we started trying out some new channels. Um, so we actually posted some, uh, you know, Twitter content, and then we posted some content on uh, TikTok, right? Um, so I had seen on TikTok some of these accounts that posted the same video over and over again, and it would and it end up blowing up multiple times. Really? So that's actually how we started our TikTok. We had a video where we went to the Apple store and we had Nick just pop every single iPhone in the row, you know, at an Apple store. He just popped every single one in a row, tapped it, popped, tapped it, right? Just showing that it works with all modern phones um, and these phones don't need an app, right? So we created a video and then it was our plan to post this video over and over again on TikTok until it did well. Because we knew it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We knew it was gonna do solid. We knew it was good content. Um, and I had seen this like technique where people, and the, the crazy thing is, if you do that on TikTok, no one will say, hey, you already posted this. No one will say that. Because every time you post something and it goes viral, it's because it's being shown to all your non-followers. Yeah. So it's very different than Instagram in that respect. So um, of course, no one even noticed we reposted it, but if you see our first four videos, they're all the same. Um, finally, that fourth time, that video got you know 22,000 views, which was a lot for us with zero followers. Sure. So, so from there, we were like, okay, 22,000 views, $0 spent, TikTok is like, there's something here. And keep in mind, this was like February, 2020, pre-pandemic, yeah. right when people were starting to be like, oh, what is this TikTok thing? It was like before TikTok. It was before the ocean spray exactly. viral video. Exactly. So then we were like, all right, let's film some more videos. So we went to the gym at UCLA. We had our friend Arev come shoot some videos with us. And this, the one video that you've probably seen, everybody's seen it, the one that has 80 million views is just us walking out of the gym. Oh, Arv, I never, I never got your TikTok. She comes back, oh, I got you. And then pops me with her popple. And it's just like 15 seconds, short and sweet, goes right to her TikTok. Whoa, how'd you do that? Like, that's, that's what I say. I'm like, whoa, how'd you do that? I like oversell it. But that video like went super viral, 80 million views now. Like Jason, what, you were up that whole night. <laughs> it's hard to sleep because you know it's so well, exciting. It's so exciting. I mean, we have one TikTok view with Lisa Ann, who's been a close friend of the show. I've interviewed her. Um, she's a go close friend of uh, Josh's dad, the Dave and Jeff show, and it has a half a million views. But I remember with Stover, once it was getting traction, like you can't not look because you're like, well, what's happening? <laughs> exactly. Explain to me what happened that night. Well, so you know, we started getting a solid amount of views and I was like, okay, well, this is doing something. I remember I went to Nick's room and I said, hey, this is doing something here. And you were like, oh, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So then I, I, I kind of went out and was just like, just really fascinated because you know, this is a new platform for sure. me. Um, and I had never seen, so on Instagram, you, unless you have millions of followers, you can't be reaching this amount of growth. Um, so it's really cool to see. And with all those views, you're also getting a lot of follows. So you know, you're getting followed like constantly. Um, eventually I did go to sleep. And then we woke up and it was at 200K or so. So not wow. bad. Um, but then uh, at, at like 8.30 a.m. when we woke up, it then just decided to just whoo. <laughs> and so, stick. yeah. Really? Like that video, like I think that, that day that it blew up, it got like, what, like 10 million views in one day? Yeah. That, and, that, and like over the next three days, we sold out of all our inventory. Yeah. We were fulfilling in our apartment still because we had never like, we hadn't blown up yet. So we were just packaging orders out of our apartment, sold out of everything. Driving them to U, uh, USPS. Yeah, yeah. Don't put them off. Dumping them off at the post office. And so like that, that it sold out of everything. And what's great about TikTok is like the viral or uh, the worldwide user base. Yes. So we were getting orders from like Europe, Asia, China, like everywhere, all around the world. So like half of the orders that went out that day were international orders. And so it was like this kind of helped us, you know, get that brand presence everywhere. And so TikTok was our primary marketing channel for the first half of 2020. What did you guys do with TikTok to build your Instagram base and also drive sales? Great question. So we did something that I highly recommend for everyone. 
you put in your bio an incentive and, a, and obviously you link your Instagram and you put an incentive to go to Instagram. So what we did was we said, um, you know, follow us on Instagram and DM, you know, X. We yeah. had like DM TikTok uh, us to us on Instagram and we'll send you a free discount code. So what that did is all this traffic from our TikTok then converted over to Instagram followers. So we were, we were blowing up on TikTok and blowing up on Instagram simultaneously. Yeah. And that's why we have over 100,000 on Instagram as well. It's incredible. Um, and so all these people were coming over, DMing us TikTok. We would say, oh, must be following us, you know, must follow us. And we were happy to give these discounts because, you know, early part in your company, you want to fill those, um, you want to get that top of the funnel pretty nice and big. So um, we had those conversions over and it ended up working really well for us. Going forward, do you think TikTok's the route you guys are going to continue to take? Or do you think it's Shopify? Or what do you think is the best route for Popple? So... TikTok was great in helping us get off the ground and getting people to know about Popple because like that's out of it too. that's yeah that's seriously every week we're we we're getting like two three million views yeah. for free for free yeah for free and that was like every time every day a TikTok would blow up we'd have a great sales day but the audience on TikTok is you know kids that use like they, they see this and it's like oh I can share my TikTok I can share my Snapchat with this um, very Gen Z yeah very Gen Z and so that worked for us but we've realized in the year sense of doing business and after going through Y Combinator, focusing on our target customers, the real people who are getting the most benefit from Popple are the people who are using it instead of business cards. Yes. They're getting rid of their business cards, they're replacing it with Popple, and they're using Popple as a tool for them to get more connections, more leads, and more sales. Mm -hmm. And so TikTok is not our primary advertising platform anymore. We're doing more Facebook, uh, Instagram advertising. Obviously, the best form of advertising is when someone uses Popple. Yeah. And that's what's great about the product is you use it on someone else. So anyone, any, all Popple users are selling Popple whenever they use it. Sure. Cause they always give that like, whoa, that wow factor whenever someone gets popped for the first time. Yeah, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more. It's so powerful once you start looking at it from a branding perspective and a business card. As sexy as TikTok is with 80 million views, I, I was talking to Jeremy Greenfield, who's part of the organization who I also met through David Meltzer, but what he said was exactly that, that you guys have shifted the strategy. And it's so hard to shift when you hit something so viral like that. And you're like, well, let's just keep making TikTok videos. Let's, let's fucking ship this thing all over the world. But then when you look from a strategy standpoint and a business standpoint, you go, well, there's businesses that have hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of people in their organization. They already have an expense line item exactly. for things like business cards. Exactly. It's not a new and expense. they want to be a digital first company. If you want to be a digital first company, if you want to be a social first company, especially, you know, in all these different industries that are waking the fuck up to social, like, I don't care if you're a law firm or you sell insurance or whatever profession you're in, like, if you're not on these platforms, then you're essentially irrelevant. But once you do get on these platforms and you do start to gain traction, like you guys have in the real estate space, can you tell us a little bit about your real estate case study? Yeah. Uh, so we, we've done large deals with a couple of real estate companies in the area. Uh, one is Douglas Elliman, for example. They made uh, a sizable order for all of their West Coast region um, agents, and it's been working very well for them because agents, you know, that's their that's their thing. Like they, you know, they're meeting a lot of people in, per in person. They are doing a lot of open houses, um, and they it's very powerful to get not only get the client's information so they can follow up, but it's also very powerful to get their information into the client's phone as soon as possible. And with the business card, you're giving someone work, but you know, I have to take the business card and I have to then do work in order to create that content or, or contact and, or I have to do work to then message that contact. We kind of jump right over that with that digital first uh, yeah. mindset. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you want? What else you got? I've got all kinds of, questions. I got a bunch. I don't know what direct you want to go. Keep going. Oh, the you, merchandise you, stuff. Or you want you to talk going? about it. Go. Okay. What has been the big, biggest challenge for you guys in getting the orders out? Did you have enough uh, supply and demand at first when you had the TikTok blow up? Could you guys keep up with everybody or how, how did that go for you guys? So at first, like when we, when, when the TikTok was blowing up, like in the first months of 2020, we were still fulfilling out of our apartment. Like I was spending like three to five hours every evening sticking popples on cars, putting them in envelopes and taking them to the post office the next day. And so that was a challenge. But when that, like, that's a, it's a good problem to have, like a champagne problem. So we realized, all right, we should probably get, yeah, we should probably get a warehouse. So we found a warehouse, um, sent all of our inventory to them. And then that's been incredible because then it's just, everything's automated. Someone orders on our, on our website, it's get shipped out the next day. We don't have to touch it. So that's easy. And that was like the logistics. Once we scale up the logistics, it freed up 
our time, my time especially, to kind of like focus on the next thing, which was at that time, it was getting popples from sticking onto instruction cards and envelopes into a retail package like this, ready to hang on the shelves. Love that, man. Simple. And how did you guys come up with the price point? Well, it was the it was actually the TikTok phase that helped us get there. <laughs> so we sold Popples for four ninety nine to start. Five dollars. Yep. Yeah, super cheap. Um, yeah, and so when we when we were blown up on TikTok, we actually kept increasing our prices because we wanted to keep inventory. We yeah. want we didn't want to run out because that's sure. a bad problem to be in. So we we really wanted to keep our inventory. So we said, you know what, let's just keep raising prices until maybe we get less buys, and hopefully then we'll save some inventory. So then we went to ten dollars, and then we went to fifteen dollars. And then eventually we ended up at 1999, um, and they were just they were selling just as fast. So wow. that basically told us, okay, you know, five dollars probably too cheap. 1999 works out, um, and we also have a you know very powerful platform and mobile app that we feel um, complements that price nicely. Tell me about the mobile app. Yeah, so Popple free app on the App Store and Play Store. Um, this guy, the the hardware itself is just half the story. Um, our software allows you to do all this additional functionality. Um, saving everyone you meet, uh, switching between multiple profiles, editing exactly what you're sharing for each pop. So, you know, if I want to share just my Instagram or just my LinkedIn, I can just edit that in the app, pop you, and whichever one I have live will be the thing that's shared. Very nice, um, just for like kind of managing what you want to share there. And then um, pop map, so you can see not only who you've met with your popple, but exactly where you've met. So you have this whole map of connections, which is also and we're very excited about. Yeah, that, that Jeremy took me through the map side of it, and the mm -hmm. map side is so powerful once you start gaining a big database. Because right. once you, I mean, I, had, I was explaining, like, I have 50,000 photos in my iPhone. I have 9,000 videos, go figure, I'm a barbecue media company. Yep. But nonetheless, I use the map feature because I yeah. can't find the album that I put it in, or I haven't put it in an album, or I haven't favorited it, but I know where I took it. I so I can get down to, hey, I took it, you know, at the restaurant or I took it in downtown San Diego or I took it, you know, in Bulgaria. Totally which, agree. I um, use that so much. It's just a very Photo powerful map. location yeah. feature. And, and exactly. Jason won't say this, but he's the one who built the entire app. It's so valuable that our CEO also built all the software. We don't have to talk to anybody. We're not outsourcing anything. Whatever we want to build, he can just get it done. Yeah. And so that's why we've been able to grow so fast and make all these new changes. Like right now we're working on a app update that's going to make everything super intuitive and we're really focused on uh, one of our big objectives to go back to your question was a big challenge is educating people on how to use this product it's a new concept yeah you know there's a it's it's a, people don't understand this at first it's like how does this work so educating users and making sure that they know that their papa does work is very important how do you make people that are using the end user your brand ambassadors because they already are like you said which is a great point is that they just through testing just through showing it they are automatically become your sales force but how do you cultivate them it's it's like we we're so focused on and jeremy we kind of get this from jeremy is lead with value like how much value can we provide to our customers whether that be show them extra analytics if they subscribe to popple pro show like give them push notifications hey like you did you popped x a number of times last week good job keep it up help them help like encourage them to go out and meet new people it's, it's like we're not just trying to squeeze dollars and cents out of our customers. We're trying to give them value and help them like see that business cards are not it. And in terms know. of ambassadors, um, it's kind of just a natural progression. It's like I buy my Popple. Now, wait a second. Am I able to make money when I use this? And our ambassador program allows that. You can now make money when you use this and, and someone else signs up or purchases a Popple using your code. Oh, really? So it's just kind of like a natural progression there that people really... Um, so with. when you went to the Y Combinator, was was there any valuable advice that you took from that experience? So much. Yeah. So much. So the big much. one is uh, talk to your users constantly. What are your users liking? What are they not liking? Talk to them and figure out how to build the exact product that they need. Keeping it simple, like you said, just like Apple, you guys want to keep everything. Oh, we should not Matt mention Apple. No, that's is it cool? We can mention Apple. Apple oh, there, Tesla. Cool. I don't give a fuck. We got <laughs> <laughs> you guys like to keep things simple, just like Apple. Keep it clean. Um, being in Walmart, do you think that's going to be a huge jump for you guys? Uh, you know, everybody's in Walmart. Everybody's in Target. You have these big stores. Do you think your supply and demand is going to go through the roof even more than it already has? Hmm. I think it'll time well with like the growth that we're doing right now. I don't necessarily think being in a retail store will increase our demand, 
but I think uh, the timing with when we're launching in stores, uh, what people are starting to hear about Papa, like we're every, every, every day we're basically someone will text us, oh, someone just popped me, or like someone just told me about Papa, That's how awesome. great of a product. So it's like that, that spread is happening. So by the time we're in retail stores, person that goes in will likely have heard of it and then buy, like hopefully buy it on the spot. How did you guys end up with the name Popple? Hmm, that's a good question. So we were throwing around some cool sounding names back in the day. Um, and we came up with Popple and we thought, so Popple, you know, your information pops up. Um, Popple, it's like, it's like people, popular. It's very like, you know, very, I guess like populous. It's kind of in that like area, which is very on brand for the company. And then um, pop count. We, you know, one of our biggest metrics is how many pops have occurred, right? That's a pop count. Yeah. So it's just like, we really just like the verb pop. And pop um, is a really powerful word. Yeah. Sure. So we just thought, hey, Popple, that's a nice, it's a nice, got a nice ring to it. Nice, uh, good name for a company. And uh, we actually, it was P-O-P-P-L-E at the beginning. But then my mom actually said, guys, that's Popel. Because <laughs> <laughs> technically it is uh, yeah. with that E. So we then removed the E. It was P-O-P-P-L. Uh, and then we realized, why do we need the extra P? And then we right. just removed that and got the domain and everything. That's great. So you, you're doing all this backend work. You're, you know, lead on that. How, how do you grow? Because I know you have other tech founders that you've talked to and you can't do everything as you guys scale. So how do you get to the point where you start to outsource? How many employees in the company right now? There's eight of us. Eight. Yeah. And, and seven. Are you actively hiring? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So we just hired two engineers. Okay. Um, Cause as a technical CEO, you know, I have all these meetings during the day and what my schedule has usually been um, up until this point, or we're kind of reaching this point is I would have these meetings all day and then maybe like five, 6 PM, I would then have the rest of the day to code. So I would then just do these meetings code for the rest of the day. So not until 2 AM. Um, and then uh, now we're kind of getting to this point where, okay, you know, we just raised our seed round. Um, so we can, we can scale up the team. We've hired two engineers who are going to help me out. Let's so go. you've already hired two engineers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, were you, what do you look for in an engineer? Great question. Well, um, we look for someone who first off gets the vision and loves the product, very social people, um, but also scalability. We're you know, ready to scale up to the millions um, and we are gonna be there very soon. How so many users need... do you have now? Well, I'm not gonna answer that, uh, keep that directly, <laughs> but uh, yeah. indirectly, we we indirectly answer that. So you're going uh, sure. to be in the millions. I'll direct that. We just hit a major milestone. Okay, a major yeah. milestone. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Okay, so we're trying to scale up. Um, and so we are looking for, or we found engineers that are you know, made for scalability and they've built that before. Um, and then back end and front end, both very important to us. So we have a nice little mix of both. My favorite part about the company is Popple Direct. I think it's a great, great asset you guys have. Can you explain to the people what, what that Absolutely. is? Absolutely. Yeah, so Popple Direct, there's two ways to, to share your information with someone. You can do a full profile, which would be like this. If I want to share all of my links with someone and be like, here's my Instagram, my website, my LinkedIn, whatever. Basically like a link tree. Yeah. Popple Direct is if you only want to share one link with someone and not your full list of profiles. So you would just turn on direct on in the app. And now whenever you pop someone, it will go directly to that first link. And this is like, sure, I like yeah, that. You move like around that. Too. And you can, you can switch it out. Let's say I'm on Popple Direct to Instagram right now. I want to change it to a text message then it would go right to my phone yeah. number, right to a text message. You don't want to share your LinkedIn with somebody you met at the bar. Is that, that's mm -hmm. maybe, maybe why you guys have it as Popple Direct? Yeah. 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 For it's certain very nice. people. It's yeah. like if you, if you meet someone and you say, hey, let, let me get your number. Um, instead of just giving them a whole link tree of, li of links, you just say, oh, yeah, no problem. You drag it right up, put it on direct. There you go. Can you share your number through Popple? Yeah. You can share anything through Popple. Instantly share anything. That's our tagline. There you go. <laughs> Instantly any, share anything. Any link or app you can share that has some kind of URL. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It's very impressive. What, um, what, what are the biggest, what are these actually? Yeah, right, so those right are right Popple XLs. So these are great for businesses to have on their counter, on their table, on their desk. You Barbecue know, even restaurants? On a wall. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have uh, multiple restaurants using XLs for menus. Um, so what's nice about these is you have the QR code in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, and then you also can tap anywhere along this pad, and it will also send using NFC. So it's kind of a two-in-one. Can brands establish their own Popple identity? So as a barbecue restaurant, we could have all of our social profiles? Yeah, oh yeah. We have restaurants who they have a whole uh, Popple profile, not direct. And on that Popple profile, they, of course, they have their menu first, makes sense. But then they also have, you know, follow us on Instagram too, or, you know, shoot us an email for feedback. And they have all these different things that the customer can interact with the restaurant with. 
I hope everybody heard that. If all the people that are in the hospitality business, if you own a bar, if you own a restaurant, it's huge. this is incredible. The things that we try to do to get people to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, Leave a review. I mean, we even have Yelp profile here, oh, yeah. YouTube profile, Clubhouse. Um, everyone that listens to this podcast know how excited I am about Clubhouse. But I, I'm excited because what you guys are doing is it, it, that direct link is one part of it, but I care so much about the, the depth of the social experience. So the depth of the ability for me to meet you, which we did at David Meltzer's, mm -hmm. and then to share your Popple profile, but then I can follow you on all the platforms that I would want to follow you on before. You get to because when you meet in person, you're lucky, you know, you go meet a girl at the bar, Josh tells me he just he only gets their Instagram, he doesn't get their number, which is... Uh, it's top secret, it's top secret. <laughs> it's top well, secret. The, the out of the bag. Make you seem shallow a little bit, but it's okay. It's all right. No, that's, that's normal in LA, you like that? Yeah, yeah but, so, but nonetheless, like, depending on what kind of business you're doing, all those depths of profile mean something because different people are active on different digital playgrounds. Absolutely. You know, some people are all in on Instagram, other businesses, they're you know, much more active on Facebook. Some people that are in journalism are much more active on Twitter, but the ability to follow all of them is very powerful. Agreed. What are you guys gonna do for the event space? Hmm. So, yeah. Because it's... literally events and conferences are coming back yeah. full force. Yeah, great question. So that, we're, we're really focused on the business events. So there's a, there's a conference coming up called Small Business Expo. Yep. We're sponsoring them. They have four live, or they have, there's a couple live events. We're sponsoring four of them in LA, Miami, New York, and Dallas. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna be at all those events, handing out, tra having people trade in their business card for Popple, and we're onboarding Amazing. people. So at this event, when the, it's literally an event for networking. And, and think about the stacks of business cards that people are gonna be bringing. We're gonna be like, here, thanks for your business card, now use this. So instead of like giving someone trash in the form of a business card, now they're actually making real meaningful connections. That's Cutting incredible. Cutting all that, that in between. What's been the biggest challenge for you guys in, in scaling the company so far? Definitely user education, I'd say, is the biggest one. Um, one of the, for example, so you know, to pop someone, especially an iPhone, you know, you can pop all around this, right? But the correct spot is right here. Okay. So, you know, convincing someone that, no, you don't pop someone here, you don't pop someone here, um, and actually having them, you know, move across this exact point, um, that kind of education and making sure that someone doesn't think that their popple is broken is probably so the is biggest. So that, that means that's where the popple has to go or no? No, no. So, so you can have your you popple anywhere here. Anywhere on the back of the phone. Got exactly. It. But you want, in, a, in order to, you know, send the data to my phone, you tap the very top. Got it. Yeah. So a lot of people, they try the middle or they try the bottom. Yeah, you know, it's like so many haters. You're like, like a this product is a scam. It doesn't work. And they just, they, they're not doing it right. Yeah. So it's like, we have to, Gotta that's, educate. that's been a big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Also just like, like, so, uh, there's so many different ways, like avenues. So we've had a lot of like internal disagreements on where, where do we go next? What do we focus on? So like, it's really important that like all the times we're, we're a unified team between like the founding team, but then also everyone else that's in this house and that is on part of our team. Which honestly, like, yes, about growth. The way we've grown is like with an amazing team. Like we have Ryan over there, our data scientist. He helps us like figure out, like we get data from our app, from our sales and figure out how to make actionable changes using that data. We have Bryce who helps us with our product, get everything from overseas to US, help us package everything. Bree runs our customer service. Like there's such a, there's a, there's a whole team behind what we're doing that I don't think they get enough credit, but they're they're super great for us. You guys do a fantastic job. It's great. What what kind of advice would you give to people that um, are thinking about starting a company? They have and they have an oh shit idea, but they're not there yet. Yeah. So big big kind of almost like core value for us is to um, launch and iterate. So launch first and then iterate. You don't have to wait until you have the perfect perfect product to launch it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a quote, not my quote, but there's a quote that we like to say, um, if you aren't embarrassed by your first product, you waited too long to launch. Um, and we were actually embarrassed by our first product. If you look at it, you know, we came, our first product, yeah. Our first, you should see our first barbecue. Oh <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It was not good. <laughs> our first product was a red and a blue one. Um, so after we, re we realized that, you know, okay, people love their black and white, yeah. but we didn't know that at the beginning. So we launched a red and a blue popple. Um, and it was actually called Ripple at the time. Um, but so then we realized uh, soon after that people don't want a red or a blue on their like 
you know, white or dark, dark phones. But we launched it and we got it out there. We got that feedback and we iterated. So instead of waiting until you get that perfect product, just launch it. You always have like room to iterate. That's my basic advice. That's great. Yeah. I, going off that, I think it's like, have, like build out something, put it out there, get feedback, but also like just find the right people to build it with. If it's starting a company, find like, I don't think anyone can do something solo. You gotta like, luckily Jason and I have been best friends for five years. So we kind of, we knew, we didn't, we didn't really know what we were getting into actually. Like when we started this, it was just kind of a hobby at the time. But like, because we've known each other for so long, we have a good relationship. It's allowed us to grow our business relationship while maintaining our friendship. So like the people that you start your company with, especially your founding team is like super, super important. Have you gotten a lot of pushback from the older generation or have they been accepting this new idea that everything is paperless these days? That's a good question. Actually, you know, we have a, we have a good amount of market share in the older demographics. So, you know, 40 and up. And it's because um, we've noticed that, uh, first off, they, they know business cards and so they use them still. Yeah. Um, and so when they see this, um, there's kind of this mindset of like, oh, that's what all the young kids are doing? Okay, maybe I should try it. So if you you know if you're in that older um, you know age bracket and you're kind of have that tiny bit of willingness to try something new, then usually we, we see a, a good amount of success there. Especially yeah. the older tech savvy people. Yeah, like for sure. there's 100%. a bunch of like older people who love new tech. Yep. And so they they love Popple. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think that's you know the the pandemic has only accelerated the digital tools that everybody is using Definitely. in a way that you know we're five years faster than where we would have been had there not been a pandemic. I mean, as far as QR codes what we're doing in our restaurant, Very true. what we're doing with all of our iPhones, what we're doing with you know, Google Pay, Apple Pay, all these different, different tools that we're using. But like you said, it's much easier for somebody to now accept, hey, this is actually solving a business problem, but even more importantly, it's solving a cultural problem. Because hmm. now I can actually go into my business meeting and talk to my staff, talk to my team and say, you know, I keep hammering you guys that you need to be on LinkedIn, that you need to be on Instagram. Like, Literally, our business cards are now a digital business card. Mm -hmm. Now we care. We know how important smartphone storytelling is. Put it on the back of your fucking phone and go use it. Like seriously, go use it. And then you use it and you go, oh my God, now I'm getting clients. Now I'm doing business. Now I'm actually, the amount of, the amount of business that's getting done now through DM, it's mind blowing to mm -hmm. me. Like yeah. literally through DM. And I don't care if that's on LinkedIn. I don't care if that's Instagram. I don't care what platform it is, but it's literally, I was telling Josh on the way up here, the Peloton that I bought, I never spoke to anyone from Peloton. Hmm. Right. I bought a $2,000 bike. It took me five minutes to buy a $2,000. Why did I buy the bike? I bought it because I have friends on Instagram mm -hmm. that love their fucking Peloton. Mm -hmm. And they post pictures, they post stories of their Peloton, of like the amount of weight that they're losing, why they like it. And guess what? Now I'm a Peloton advocate. I right. go and I buy a Peloton. And guess what? Now I've sold fucking Pelotons. Yeah. But that's how business is getting done. It's getting done through social yes. and then in real life. And that's what it's really exciting for me is to talk to you know two founders that get it, that's putting out a product that in real life you're bringing people to grow their social profile, helping them grow their social profiles. I love that because there are a lot of e-cards you know, that were way, well before Popple. We are the first, I think we are the first e-card, like digital business card that is our biggest driver is Instagram. Yes. Most of these e-cards that are looking for, you know, the business segment that we are looking for, um, they're not using Instagram. They're using, you know, more old fashioned like email or just their website, you know, a shitty but, website. Exactly. So we're, we're <laughs> using user experience. We're, we have this young, uh, cause we have this young mindset, but we're also targeting these same professionals. Correct. We're doing it a different way. Yeah. Super, super powerful. Is there any advice that you'd like to give to anybody out there that's, uh, you know, interested in what you're doing, interested in digital technology, interested in digital hospitality? Well, um, my favorite quote is, um, you gotta live a life that most people wouldn't in order to live a life that most people can't. So, so if you gotta- up till 2 a.m. Exactly, Later. if you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> grind, you gotta grind and put away some months slash years of your life, trust me, it is gonna be worth it. You're doing all this hard work, it's gonna be seen uh, later on. Yeah, I'd say like, always appreciate what you have and where you're at and where you came from. So like every morning I'll meditate, gratitude, affirmations, all that stuff. Like being in a, in a positive mind state has allowed me to just be super productive all the time. Like putting, putting yourself, putting your life into perspective, be like, 
wow, I'm so grateful to be here. Um, like instead of like thinking about the things you don't want, like always focus on positive thoughts and the things you do want and like, like think, like be grateful for the things you have. It's like, that's helped me a lot. And I think that would be, I think I wish everyone would be more positive and have an abundance mindset. For sure. I think the world would be a better place. David Meltzer quote. David yeah. Meltzer, absolutely. David Meltzer is all over Got that digital David. hospitality. <laughs> he is. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think of Beverly Hills and Popple? I'm jealous. I know. Yeah, I wish I, I lived here, dude. You wish, I wish what's I it, what's this called again? The Rotunda. The Rotunda. I wish I had my own Rotunda. This is sweet. But um, I'm, I just met you guys, but I'm really proud of you guys. You guys are an inspiration of people that are under the age of 30. You guys are doing a great thing. Thank you. Thanks, so Josh. we're uh, we're going to let Josh plug his uh, JP25 media. Yeah, follow me on, <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter, JP25media, at Josh Palet, P-A-L-E-T. Appreciate you, Sean. I appreciate you, Jason. I appreciate you, Nick. Thank you for having me. And uh, it's yeah. a great time. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Uh, as always, stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help.